Good morning, brothers and sisters. Doug White down here in Alabama. <clears throat> Peace and love to everybody. Right there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, anybody that uh, tunes in this little channel, a handful of people that might be listening. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to say about this. Uh, when you're reading uh, the, the scripture, sometimes you'll be reading about discipleship, which gives you something to do. And sometimes you'll be reading about sonship, which there's nothing to do. And I believe that's where a lot of the confusion is uh, uh, comes up. Sometimes you're reading about sonship. Sometimes you're reading about discipleship. And discipleship means learner. And uh, uh, there's something to do in that. To obey. And follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. But some uh, sometime you'll be reading along and, and like uh, there's a, there's different saves I believe in the Bible. Where it says uh, save yourself from this untoward generation. The gospel, knowledge of the gospel, saves you in this world, this time world that goes on up to the last day. Knowledge of the gospel and belief in the gospel. That's what the gospel does. Well, it saves, <laughs> saves you from this untaught generation. But the gospel doesn't save you eternally. The, the, the message of the gospel, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit regenerates a person, and they're ready for eternal life right then. But the gospel is information about your blessed condition. My wife got me some coffee going. <clears throat> That's the only coffee maker I have. And there is, a, I got one coffee maker, and that's my wife. But uh, anyway, the uh, the uh, sometimes you'll be reading over there in, in your Bible, and, and it'll be talking about uh, sonship. Sometimes it'll be talking about uh, discipleship. And that's the difference. Save yourself from this important generation. That's an example. But like I say, the gospel. It's good news. People that believe in Jesus can save themselves a whole lot of problems, a whole lot of trouble in this present evil world. But it does not save you eternally. That is when you when you read over there and it's there's nothing to do when it's talking about the, the new birth. And there is a something to do when it's talking about discipleship. Over there where it said uh and it said a lot of people think over there where it's talking about uh, the uh, uh, where it says, "I'm just this is off the top of my head." Uh, uh, he he had these hard sayings, and he said, "I find I'm just paraphrased. I'm not sure exactly the, the wording, but it says, and his disciples walked no longer with him. They didn't follow him anymore." But this is talking about, it says, his disciples. Some people read real fast. They might need to slow slow down a little bit while they're reading the Bible and catch the words. It's talking about his disciples. These were his people, brothers and sisters. But the, the, they were one of those that the, the cares of this life had choked off and they, they no longer walk with them. These are people, I believe, you know, my view is they fall away and they but they're God's people. But he says his disciples, learners. That was too hard for them, you know. But uh, his disciples. See, that, that tells you it's, they're his. So, uh, but a lot of people take that as, well, you know, they lost their salvation. No, they were his disciples. They were following him and it, and it came to, you know, it came to a point where they turned away. But that does not mean that they they're not his people in this portion of the view. There's another place where it says, they received the word with gladness or joys. Well, somebody else quote, you know, they were they received the word with gladness or joy. Well, dead ain't a sinner doesn't receive the word with with gladness, in my view. Uh, 
there's another part where it says, you know, this has all been brought up to abide, abide in him. Well, that's, that's an obedient, that's a discipleship verse. Abide is, is you, it means to obey. You abide by the law. And so you obey, uh, God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, you, you <laughs> stay with him. But if you, uh, you, uh, that's over in John 15. We'll get with it, get with it later. That's a whole other subject. But that's, a, in my view, that's a discipleship verse too, where it's talking about the fires of John 15. But if you notice that, it says men uh, gathered them up in bundles. These are uh, people that did not abide in the vine. His people that didn't abide in the vine. That's a discipleship uh that's a discipleship verse. I mean, chapter. And incidentally, I went to a conference one time where well, it was supposed to be a sovereign grace conference. <clears throat> and John 15 was the theme of the conference. It was supposed to be a sovereign grace conference. And they used this instead of a discipleship uh, chapter, they used it as a uh, sonship and show, to prove that. Uh, People could lose the salvation or put a scare in God's people. But uh, uh, if you look at uh, John 15, let's look at this real quick. I hope I got time to do it. Okay, here we go. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay, right here it says, Every branch in me. In me, in Christ, all live. In Christ, all live. These branches were in him. But there were some uh, that didn't bear fruit. He said, uh, every, every branch in me that bears fruit, he purges. But see, both of these branches were in him, see. And he says, and ye are clean through the word which you are spoken to. These are clean branches, brother and sister. This is the discipleship passage in my view. Yeah, but anyway, this uh, this uh, conference was supposed to be some some uh, sovereign grace people, and uh, uh, John MacArthur and Paul Washer was a big hero of these people, you know, <laughs> at this conference. And uh, they talked about John fifteen, and they were up there scaring everybody. And he said, "Well, and men gather these un these unproductive these branches that didn't abide in him. Abide means to obey." And you abide by the law. So that's what it's talking about. These, these branches didn't obey him. And men took them and bundled them up. At the end of the world, angels <laughs> gathered them up and burned them. Say. But here, men gather these branches and bundle, bundle them and, uh, branches and they're burned. But anyway, at the end of the world, angels gather. So this is a discipline. This, they're disciplined in this world. And men discipline them, you know. Evil men gather them up, in my view. But anyway, this is another one of those uh, uh, hard saying passages that everybody takes. It's talking about discipleship, and they take it and put it over there and act like it's sonship to prove that person can uh, lose their salvation. But in my view, this uh, this part in uh, John 15, of course, I went to a, con a whole Weekend Convention, that's all they talk about with John 15. Like I say, and uh, the big hero <laughs> or the the big uh, popular fellow with John MacArthur and, and uh, this uh, Paul Washer uh, at this conference, supposedly a sovereign grace, grace conference. And I don't use, uh, I don't tell, I don't use uh, on my little videos, I don't, uh, Use names of different or different religious orders, or try not to call names except if they're real famous, like you know John MacArthur, MacArthur <clears throat> Paul Washington. I'll use their name because they're out there in the public. But uh, I usually try not to use those names. Use names of different orders because I don't want anybody uh, going out and and joining or meeting up with some <laughs> religious order that I brought up on the air and. Getting their feelings hurt when they find out that you believe the earth is flat, for instance. <laughs> You'll get your feelings hurt. So that's the reason I don't mention any religious orders. But anyway, 
Sometimes the Bible is talking about this boy, boy's view. He's talking about uh, sonship. Sometimes he's talking about uh, discipleship. Over there, uh, over there, where it's talking about the uh, gosh, I don't know where which one to go to next. Uh, again, here in John 15, uh, these branches are in me. Here's the key word: in me. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, say, every branch in me, these branches that are in him that beareth not fruit, and he takes them away. But they're in him, in Christ, all live. And all these branches are clean branches. But I don't, I won't, can't go to this other, I ain't got time. But these are clean branches, brothers and sisters. But they didn't abide in him, they didn't produce fruit. They, uh, in this present evil world, they were gathered up, men gathered them. Just remember that. At the end of the world, angels gathered them. So this is a temporal, temporal, I don't like to use judgment. Sometimes I use that word. I shouldn't use it, I don't guess, but it's a temporal chastening or whatever you want to call it in this present, in this present evil world. And God will use men to do it. <laughs> and anyway... Anyway, uh, let me, uh, but it, the whole thing is to obey, obey your God. This is the, my view. This is the discipleship. First, uh, oh yeah, here it is. Here, here it is. Right here. Herein, my Father, herein is my Father glorified that ye may bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. This is the discipleship verse. These disciples fell away. I believe over here where it's talking about in the on the fallow ground, it's also talking about uh, discipleship because uh, they received the word with gladness. The head alien sellers don't receive the word with gladness, in my view. I mean, they don't hear over here. So they hear the word and they receive it gladly. In the cares of this life, uh, they become offended. Just like obeying Hebrews, I believe, obeying Hebrews 6, 6. They, they were offended, fell away. From the faith once delivered to the saints. But uh, in this uh, John 15, this is my view, is a discipleship passage. And it requires something. It requires obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple means a learner. And it requires, but many of them fell away, offended for the, they're offended. And it's, the cares of this world choke it off. And anyway, that's my view on those. But the reason a lot of people get it mixed up is because sometimes the Bible is talking about discipleship. The New Testament is talking about discipleship. Sometimes it's talking about uh, uh, sonship. Was it Jonathan Edwards did that terrible sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, <laughs> supposed to be a great man. But he did the sinners in the hands of angry God. I don't know if you ever heard that sermon. This works from top to bottom. And he's supposed to be a famous uh, man within the sovereign grace people. But now, uh, John 15, in my view, it, uh, men gather and, and burn. And these are the fires of John 15. <laughs> they're not the fires of hell. They're, they're, they're the... Uh, Fire trials on this earth, you know, God uses fire to straighten out his, uh, to, he uses fire, fiery trials. God's people, uh, use, God's people sometimes go through fire trials. And those disobedient children uh, are still his children, in my, in my view. But anyway, sometimes we're talking about sonship, sometimes we're talking about uh, discipleship. I'll get out of here and get on to the next subject here. And I uh, try to get back where you didn't get anything covered. All I did was just ramble. I know, but anyway, I was trying. Peace and love from everybody, from, to everybody out there, from this old boy down here in Alabama.